elongate the scaphoid. It's going to distort the scaphoid and elongate it. So you see how it says you may also place risk of ulnar deviation for this projection. It's essentially just an alternative method to that. So the IR deviation. is at 20 degrees. So I would not recommend using this method, but we do need to know this for the registry. It's just an alternative scaphoid view. Probably for the patient, like if they're not able to rotate their hands. Right, to that like they could not turn their hands. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ideal by any means, but that would still get you a pretty good X ray. Yes, please. Please, yes. They did a sunrise like that. They like grabbed it and was the patient was on a stretcher like this. That's normal. Oh, no, that's normal. That's normal. oh really? Mm -hmm. That's the best way to do it. That is the best way to do it. But you're going to see texts that have the patient sit down and put it underneath the patient like this. That's Instead of holding it like this. Mm -hmm. They'll do it the opposite. Don't worry, we'll be learning about yeah, that yeah, yeah, later this semester. Yeah, we're doing other issues. <laughs> okay. So the CR is perpendicular to the table and enters at the scaphoid. That's it right there, like the little snuff box. Note, if uh, proper support for IR is unavailable, <laughs> CR may be angled 20 degrees towards the elbow. Ooh, we'll give you so the same one effect, does have, essentially. This one has the angle. So the other one does not have the angle. <coughs> if, if the IR cannot be in the 20 degrees. Okay, so this is the position. Like there. Yep. For the PA axial scaphoid extension method. So um, the evaluation criteria is the distal radius and ulna carpals and proximal half of the metacarpals are visualized. The scaphoid with adjacent articulations are open. No rotation of the wrist, bony trabecular detail, and surrounding tissues should be visualized. So as you can see, the scaphoid is in profile right here. See how much longer it looks as well? Mm. It's elongated. It's elongated because of the angulation of the, uh, the sorry, the cassette. And if not, if you cannot get that into, um, if you cannot angle the cassette, then you would angle your um, central ray to make sure that it's going 20 degrees towards the elbow instead of here. By the way, it's not scapho, it's just called. <laughs> it's not like a slang term for scapho. Scapho. <laughs> get a scapho. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. That joke is terrible, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dad joke. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so we know this is scaphoid. So what's this? This is scaphoid. Oh, that's what I was Sorry, I didn't know you were asking me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were thinking about it. <laughs> Look, Paula, can you answer this for me? I don't know. <laughs> so what's this one? Jackie's Okay, so if this is scaphoid right here, right? What area is this? The first digit? First. 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 That's a good test question there. Very nice question. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the gain or heart method and also known as the tangential carpal tunnel. I have never seen this done. Me either. I've never yeah. seen this done. I've never seen this done, but, but you just need to know it probably for the registry because I've never seen it. But oh. never know. I might I always say I never see something, you see something strange. <laughs> so. Uh, part positions, you want the forearm resting on the table and aligned with parallel, aligned parallel with the long axis of the table. Hyperextended wrist to place long axis of the hand as vertical as possible. So vertical as possible. Um, center CR to the joint at the level of radi radial styloid. Grasp digits with opposite hand to maintain ex 
extended position, this gentleman right here, and then rotate hands slightly toward the radial side. Well, so towards the thumb there, side. But you can do this. Yes, yeah, so you can just grab it, just like this. That's a good stretching exercise. Sling. Yeah. Sling. And then you want to sit on the shelf. Center at the level of the radial stylus. So, so, guys, what? So, this is actually, I've seen this come up on some register reviews, and this position answers itself. What position do we use to evaluate carpal tunnel? Tangential uh, carpal tunnel. Tangential carpal tunnel. Uh, also, know this because he yes. will be asking on the test, he won't say the carpal tunnel. He's not going to say. He's going to ask you what can you use for carpal tunnel to visualize it and this is going to be the answer choice right here. Gain on mark. So you need to know. Like I'm getting the secrets right now. I'm trying Tell to us more. Tell us yeah. more. When he's them. not present though. No, no, no. He, he, no not, while he's present. No, no, I'm telling you so everybody should get this one. 100 right, right here. This is the, the question right here that you know. That should be no. Nobody should miss it. Everybody's in here? Yes. Nobody should miss it. Then. <laughs> All right, so the CR um, angle 25 to 30 degrees towards the palm and of the hand flex. Oh, sorry, rewind. Angle 25 to 30 degrees towards palm of the hand and elbow enters at a point approximately one inch distal to the base of the third metacarpal. The IR collimation radiation field to one inch, uh, 2.5 centimeters uh, on the three sides of the shadow of the wrist. And that should have been highlighted, guys. Make sure you know that angulation for this one. 25 to 30 degree angle towards the palm of the hand. Yeah, this is the star right here. Why did it say towards the palm of the hand and you see his elbow? I'm not because it's the, Because you're aiming towards the palm of the hand and the elbow. Same direction. Oh, okay. But yeah, do know that angulation, guys, for being our hearts. <laughs> Uh, 20 to 30 degree to the long axis of the hand means the same as the palm of the Long axis of the hand, yes. You can say the same thing. That is a picture of the wrist, guys, not an elbow, by the way. If you're glancing at that, it comes like an elbow. That's yeah. the wrist. It's the pistol right here. So these are the uh, radius. And the radius. And then this is showing. This right here is the carpal bones right here they're showing. So I'm making sure you all had a relative says they had carpal tunnel one. That's a view for evaluating that carpal tunnel. Are they able to <laughs> position themselves for that if they have carpal tunnel? Say again? Would the patient be able to do this well, to themselves? Well, if they cannot do that, you would usually uh, use that tape method like you saw in the previous picture and have them just kind of pull their fingers back. If they absolutely cannot do it themselves, though, you'd stand up there with them with a vest to pull their fingers back for them. Or the tech would, right? The tech would, not you, I'm sorry. Tech, yes. Whenever you become a tech, yes. <laughs> okay, same thing, same uh, position we're talking about. So the carpal is in an arch, uh, in an arch arrangement. If you look at your book, it actually looks like it makes an arch shape. Uh, pisiform in profile and free of superimposition, camelus of hamate, and then bony trabecular details surrounding uh, and of the soft tissue. Should be visualized. So two great questions there, guys. If I need to better visualize the pisiform because it does superimpose on the triclutrum, what method would I use? Hand or heart. If I want to really see that hand of the handmate, what method could I use? What do you use for the radial deviation? What? That one's for the Yes, scaffold. radial deviation. Radial deviation, yes. All our deviations for scaphoid. The book has an image of the patient doing something like this. Is that also okay? I don't think we're talking about that. Is that a view? Yes. That's a very uncomfortable one, as you can imagine. Which essential, well, sorry, review question. Which uh, essential projection requires the central ray to be centered to the third MCP joint? Yeah. No, that's the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read that carefully, guys. Yeah. So what are you reading on? Yeah. So you're saying, so you're saying A. That's a B. 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 B
<laughs> so guys, that's a great example. Please read those questions carefully. Read them three times before you answer. Because a lot of you say PA risk right off the bat. Third and Have to have race and ulna on a hand x ray. Oh. Distal race and ulna. Oh, okay. so so but, but in the, in the slide, you said to CMC. We do want to see the CMC, but as far as the collimation goes, it needs to be about one inch proximal to the ulnar styloid to make sure we're including distal race and ulna. By the way, you're not going to get a question like this on your test. Oh. That's, they're not going to ask you special types of questions. Yeah. Like, I was just trying to. That, that, was a, that was a challenge question. That was a challenge question. Yesterday was like, well, Mr. 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 That's okay, but trapezium must be on AP position of the thumb. In fact, all the thumb x-rays you see trapezium. So you got to open that collation down enough to see that joint. It's really joined together. Is that how you're feeling right now? Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. You got my head hurt. Okay, um, generally, people with PA injection of the hand by the way, you can slash humorous off there. Humorous will be next chapter. I was about to say. I know. So please remember, guys, when you're studying, the chapter we're on now does include humorous, mm -hmm. but we're not talking about humorous until the next section. So you can stop at elbow. Don't overstudy. Okay, general procedural guidelines. So hand shoulder and elbow shoulder Preparation for all procedures of the upper 
extremity require removal of radio pick artifacts from the anatomy of interest. So watches, rings, bracelets, bra for the humerus. But and sleeves. Do all you forget about long sleeves? Mm -hmm. Don't let them leave their sleeves down. Someone's last one. Yes. Yeah. 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 I said, can you please remove everything? Especially when you get to Capstone, I'm telling you, it's not just Mr. Donahue, Mr. Donahue, Mr. Fong, and Ms. Bonilla, we all we hit you hard on that, about that humorous position. So even for your lab test that's about to come, please be careful. Get that humorous resting down, rest all the way down. Even if the patient looks awkward, which they will, get it down. I know that sometimes they'll be like, oh my gosh, it hurts because I know y'all have position y'all, you know, groups and stuff like that so you know how it feels so think about being in pain so you know i need you to get into this position you know that's what you're down to be a little saying um i need you to get in this position oh i need you to yes because you know it's like the pain like a lot of people like they're like oh my shoulder i can't do that i need you to do it you know when you're talking to a nurse you're just saying i need you to shut up <laughs> That's my little code set. So. No, please don't, 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 don't repeat that. <laughs> when you become a tech, you can say it all you want, but not as a student. Please don't say that. Stand up for our department against. So, love hate relationships sometimes. So, your nurses? There are some good nurses. I got some family that are nurses too. You work very hard to become a nurse, I think, because the personality. There's a lot that get into nursing that should not be. We work very hard to become matron sex too. To get yelled at by nurses. Right. You okay? I'm writing her. This is the second message. All right. So, the patient's affected. There, there, there literally is a civil war between radiology and nurses that's been going on since the beginning of time. So, um, nursing has always been trying to take over radiology and we've not let them do so. And we've just always been having a bunny of heads. Nurses are just cocky and trying to tell people what to do. And I'm like, oh, I'll work for you. I said since when? Since the 1900s. Yeah, back, you know, when I was born in the 1900s. 19. <laughs> yes. No, I, I'd rather hear that than hear the, uh, what, what year you were born in? 2000 and, and. <laughs> 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 what year were you born in, Melanie? 2000, there's no and. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's <laughs> All right, the patient's infected extremity rests on the IR place on the table. Non-ambulatory patient's position can be altered to allow imaging of this anatomy with the patient in the bed or on a stretcher in a supine position. Humorous images uh, may be obtained with the patient standing or seated upright or in a supine position on the radiographic table or on a stretcher. Or, like you said, as of right now, you don't need to know this, I guess, for the next test? Not for this upcoming test, okay. <clears throat> next chapter. This is just a little heads up, little preview. Heads up, heads up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you say? <laughs> All right. Uh, collimation size, use the smallest IR that demonstrates the anatomy. So 10 by 
Text, you're like, open it up, open it up. But you know, keep in mind, the tighter that combination is, it's going to really make you stand up amongst the crowd for the text. So, when we're doing that, why does the green part have to be It's not, it's going to be showing up on the, the, the computer. So, like, if you have it, it's going to have to, it's going to be flipped, you know? So, that's not yeah, really something that we require anymore, but it used to be a big um, deal about making sure that cassette was facing the right way so it would populate and hang properly on the computer screen, but now with the digital technology, Yeah, you really can like anymore. flip it around and stuff like that. So too. we don't really push that practice as much anymore, so. However, there's some texts that still do, they do not like when you, because then that takes their time to go, oh, I gotta do this, just put it in right, you know. Well, I gotta click two buttons. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they get so mad, hard. they're like, they're why happy. didn't you put it like this? <laughs> it's like, no, also, the so marker placement is very important too because that's why that's why Mr. Dundee like teaches you um, how to where to place the marker, like on the lateral side and stuff like that, and how it's facing. Because it means well, technically it doesn't really matter, but when you have to do your um, optimal images, that marker has to be perfect. It has to be in perfect position. Anything else you're to do? No. Just for your, um, you have a portfolio. portfolio. You're going to work on. So, like the portfolio is like looking at your past, how bad, like it's like unacceptable, acceptable, or optimal. So, when you want your optimal images, you have to know where that marker placement is. So that's why I was telling you guys to make sure you write down the whole session number so you can go back and look at your old, um, previous exams, and you're like, oh, I like that one. You know? Okay. SID forty and <laughs> SID man. When I tell you, I'm so happy when we had this. I ain't gotta worry about that 72. <laughs> until, you get, until you get to the spine. If someone should 72 on this test, we'll be very disappointed. <laughs> Don't put 72, guys. This is like the last of the semester, honestly. This one right here. This whole, yeah, this whole semester, right? Yeah. It's 40 inches. What about next semester? Next semester, you're getting into spine work and stuff like that. So, like C spine and stuff like that, you'll see it for the uh, OIB and stuff like that. So, you have to have 72. You're going to see, y'all going to see that. When do we get to feet? Feet. Like lower That's like at the end of the semester, right? The second to last. It's the third chapter of the semester. Yeah. After yeah. shoulder drill. And yeah. it'll be Jalen, right? Yes. Yeah, y'all are going to be. God help us. Oh, Jalen? Yeah. Jalen's a foot guy? Yeah. Okay. He's he, loves toes. Toes. he is a foot guy. <laughs> yeah, I figured. He has an obsession he, with toes. He better bring the cocoa butter. You better tell him to bring the cup of That's an inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one with the glossy mask. <laughs> 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 I don't know if he wears his sunglasses. He wore the sunglasses too. Oh, yeah. Yes. Isn't this guy who's like, he said he was a valedictorian? He said he was valedictorian? Yeah, I said you.
about like the portable? No. No. No, you gotta write portable. <laughs> no. Portable yeah. on the thing, right? No. No. That's how, what I'm saying. No. I didn't that yesterday. It doesn't semi write. It's just a, it's a big no. Then how do you put portable on the image? You don't. You, you find a physical portable. It's marker. a physical, yes. As crazy as that it. sounds, they do exist. Oh. I'm yeah. just, the reason I'm being so loud about that is because they will ask that on your registry. Yes. And it does not matter what you've seen, it's always a physical marker, period. That's going to be the correct answer. You know, when you become a tech, I'm sure you're gonna put digital markers, and that's fine and dandy, it's a good thing. But for your tests, you never use the digital marker. Look at this guy. You see how you put the digital marker in? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I have used like, digital markers. I was about to say you told us yesterday. <laughs> because you know, I've, I've forgotten my markers before, and it's happened. And I gotta get the job done. But what I'm telling you is what they're gonna ask you curriculum-wise. You cannot do digital markers. Period. That's not considered optimal practice. So. From now on, so you guys go to registry, and after you do registry, it's always real, not none of that digital stuff. Well, John was using stuff. digital markers, but then he did um, one where he, it was a car accident person, and he came and basically snatched my markers <laughs> off of me to use them. But he had used digital markers the whole day until that particular point. I don't like your And let me, and let me tell y'all something as well. If you, if you ever it's get so into pediatrics, that is something that's vital to your job as an extra tech. And I've told y'all before why. If there's ever any suspicion of funniness with a child or abuse or whatever, they cannot consider a, an x-ray, an actual legal document without the physical marker. Because digital markers can be altered. But a physical marker, when you can put stuff to cover it up, it's still on that image. You can remove the digital stuff off of it. So it will not be a legal binding docket document with a digital marker on there. Or if a patient were to sue the hospital, it could be contested as well, technically. There's no no physical marker on there. Like if you had an exam and you thought they did, like let's say they did the wrong x-ray on one of y'all's feet, and you're like, they x-rayed the wrong foot. I want to take this to court. I want to sue the hospital. Blah, blah, blah. If it's not a physical marker, there's no contest on it. It's not considered a, do a legal document without a physical marker in place. So maybe that's why they use <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why probably they save themselves from like lost. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What are your tests? Yeah. No digital questions. I was gonna ask about the disposable markers. Um, I know that we're not necessarily supposed to like use them, but like if we become a tech and let's say we forget our marker one day and it's imperative that we have to mark it, um, would a disposable marker be rated higher than a digital marker at that point? It's considered as bad as a digital marker. Okay. Because there's no, initials. There's no yeah. initials, right. or there's no like indication of who that tech was on there. It's just okay. hard to tell. That's what I thought, okay. And I know y'all like to be like, well, our techs did this, our techs did that. We used to argue all the time, but it doesn't matter. Like these techs are basically showing you sometimes what not to do. You know? They're Most showing time. you not how to be, you know, they're being rude or doing, you know, something that you, like this is how yes. what I learned. They're showing you what not to do. If we're so. trying to pump and they use, uh, you use your marker, but they put that digital marker on top as of As long as I can see that you use your marker, it's, okay. it's fine. That's out of your control. Okay. And then they took a picture too. <coughs> yeah, my tech did that too. Well, yeah. I, have, I, I know how to, I know how to find what they've done. That's oh, okay. So where you can see the, See, that's where texts <laughs> are so ignorant. They think that you can hide that stuff. Like, oh, I opened the combination too much. I can just crop it out. Mm -hmm. You can always reverse that. Uh, those who are super users of Pat, which I used to be, you can see everything someone's done to manipulate on animals. So people think they can get crafty and hide stuff. There's always a paper trail on everything. So it just pays just to do it ethically the first time. It really does. I think what's in the dark don't come to the light. <laughs> so I guarantee you half those texts you work with don't realize there's a paper trail that everything they manipulate on those images. Seriously. Radiation protection, so you want to do close collimation, um, optimal technique factors, gonadal shielding should be used according to state regulations or to reduce patient anxiety. Guys, shield your patients. <laughs> I know that a lot of our techs don't, they'll just go in there and just take the x-ray and they're like, well, if patients say that, why do I have to do this? And they're, they're covering this and that, no, just, just, just shield them. Until we change it. That's probably gonna happen in the next two years, but for now, it's still shield. Patient instructions, explain and demonstrate 
the position to, uh, to be performed after the patient's anatomy has been placed in the proper position, it is usually sufficient to, rem uh, to remind the patient to hold the position until given further instructions. And then, we don't need to know this, but hum uh, humorous examinations require the patient to suspend respirations during the exposure. Um, patient instruction is very important. Explain, you don't just bring your patient in and just slam them on the table and be like, all right, this is what we're gonna do like that. You explain it, go through it, so they can feel comfortable. Treat them how you want them to treat your, your family, you know? I know you guys are tired. You guys sing the song for us? Mama, I don't got time for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I That's a little, uh, I, I gotta embarrass her for a second, but she actually has a beautiful singing voice. Mm -hmm. oh. So karaoke she night? sing very well. If we do that um, international day, I'll sing. You write songs too, correct? Yes. yes. <laughs> I had to embarrass her for a second. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite was uh, what was it? Raymond? Raymond. <laughs> I, I don't know, I forgot to put it on there. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I think I said put them on there. All right, so. Essential projections of the forearm, elbow, and humerus. Okay, so we're gonna first talk about the forearm. Only two, the AP and lateral. Okay, so for the AP forearm, the patient's position, you have the patient seated, close to the radiographic table, and low enough to place the entire extremity in the same plane. Let's show them here. Um, elbow extended with hand supinated, humeral, uh, epicondyls, um, Equidistance. Okay, thank you. Uh, from IR, long axis, uh, forearm aligned parallel. So guys, make sure, even though you're like, oh, this looks pretty, you know, it looks nice, it looks like they're, um, the, they're, uh, they're parallel, but you have to actually fill the epicondyles. Go from, yeah, so you need to fill it to make sure that they're actually parallel, because even though my arm looks like this, I can like move it, you know, like this. So make sure that these are parallel. That's an easy position to screw up. Basically. Yeah, because it's like, oh, it's it. easy, but no. It's what not. do you mean these two are parallel? Yeah, can, 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 you can, can you move it by yeah. any time? Yeah. So yeah. even though you're that thinking, thinking that it's like, so you feel it right here, you feel it. Yes, it's right there, but how can you change the... So you feel it if you bring forward, look, right here, like that. So that's parallel right here. I felt on both sides, and I can feel it. Yeah. I'll take those epic even though this looks like it's your hands turning this way, I can feel this, and I can feel like this. It's because of the curves. Huh? It just depends on how the flexibility of the patient. Like I can go outwards, I can go in, like on mine. So you have to fill. I want to state once again, guys, make sure that humerus is flat because if that humerus is not flat on the table, you're going to be doing Watch partial it. flexion. It's going to distort the elbow. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, so I don't know why it says lower right here. It says what? Lower uh, the oh, table. Okay. See, it says on here, it says lower the table. Just to make sure that humerus is in the same plane as the forearm. You can, I mean, you can lower or hide the table. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, lower, that's why it's going like that. So this is parallel. So basically, from the forearm all the way to the yeah, just basically all down. Yes. Okay, so central ray, um, perpendicular to the IR and enters patient midpoint of the forearm. And Mr. Donahue had a trick to this, but now I just visualize. But he does, he puts uh, both points on both joints, so the elbow, uh, elbow joint and the wrist joint and goes midway. And then that's how you figure it out. But now, I'm just sorry. You got your x-ray vision. <laughs> yeah, I can see it now. Um, IR collimation, uh, radiation field two inches distal to the wrist joint and proximal to the elbow joint one inch on the sides. So you want to make sure that you are including the elbow joint and the wrist joint in this. So don't collimate it like, oh, I'm gonna collimate to here or I'm collimate to here. You need to include the wrist and the elbow. That is very important to have both those joints. <clears throat> and same thing for this marker. I don't know why this picture like to do it. Not they're, hanging it but they're hanging it the other way. You can technically hang that with the hand down, but we learn most of the time hanging it with the hand up. Okay. But both are considered correct for a forearm. So the marker should have been placed uh, like the opposite way? Either way is actually correct on this. Because if you go to the next image, you can see they hung it down 
See, this x ray is hung with the list down. Oh, uh, no, I, I, was meaning, I was meaning this is not on the lateral side. Oh, you're not on the lateral side. I thought you were talking about how the mark, that mark is upside down. Yeah, you can hang the, the, red, you can hang the right forearm with the hand up or the hand down. Both are considered correct. That's what I was referring to. Uh, so, my bad. So, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> so you were saying that the marker should have been uh, like on the lateral side? As opposed to the medial? It's okay on yeah. the lateral. I always put it on the lateral side. You can do the lateral side. Put it on the side. Is that the case? We, just always, we, we always do it on the lateral side. That's why I remember. typically considered correct. I mean, you can do it either way. It's just my preference because Mr. Donahue is always like, do the lateral side. Uh, yes. the, uh, would they have uh, gotten in trouble or like penalized for having the collimation so open? Because I feel like that's on at this? least four or five inches. On this? Yeah. That's, I would say that's within range, yeah. but yes, you could definitely you call it Exactly. This one, probably on this side, but this is pretty good. It's open. It has the joint. You need both joints. Yeah. I was just saying the forward and back because the marker has so much space to go in. Yeah. Like, even before hitting the shadow. Okay. AP forearm. Okay. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
Isn't there an alternative to this? Like, there's too much pain? Yeah. No. Yeah, there you go. Well, there's a cross. Yeah, they can't get to an AP. Well, that's totally bad. I need to. I mean, it's good. I mean, a PA would still be good enough, though, right? No, no. That's good enough to sit in the office, huh? No, they'll cross over. Why not? Well, what's the, what is the specific reason I don't want to do a PA? That's a test question. Yeah. Okay. I heard all kinds of weird answers here. What's, what's the answer? Someone said the correct thing. I heard, I heard, I heard somebody say it. I heard somebody say it. The, the space. Is it the dual spaces or no? I think that this guy will also lock. What's going to happen? It's going to cross over. Grace and Alma will cross we'll over each other. We want them nice and separated, separated. like you see right here. PA, they will cross over each other. Now, you're going to see a lot of techs out there do a PA forearm for patient comfort or because they're in a cast. Oh, they're in a cast. They can't do a. Yes, they can. If my arm's stuck in a cast like this, how can I still get an AP? Cross paper. Put the cassette behind them like this, right? I can still get that AP. Don't if you see this garbage, don't don't take that as a fact. That's that's not true. We can always get an AP, even if they're in pain, you just have to adjust how we think about the X-ray. Because once again, PA is in a cross the race and all that that's not an optimal radiograph, they could miss something on that. And the doctor's gonna think you're a terrible tech. <laughs> I had a patient that came in and uh, they couldn't abduct, and I comped on this one. Um, they couldn't abduct their arm, so I told my tech, you can do it on the wall, Buffy, you know, because you can have her stand. And she got, I was like, can you slightly move your arm just a little bit going this way? And she was like, yes. And then so I just kind of tilted her hand going this way to make sure that these were perpendicular, everything was good. And we shot going this way. We're using the wall stand. Dang. So it was like a humorous. Kind of like that, yeah. And that is a great example of critical thinking skills that Aaliyah demonstrated on this, guys, which is I want, I want you guys to develop that. This is why you're gonna be the best out there. You're not gonna be like these subpar techs go to these other schools. You're gonna be the best because you're gonna learn how to think critically outside the box. Yeah. So many other people are so by the book, and you find work with tech, they're so by the book, they can never get outside that mode of thinking. And something happens with an odd patient, and they're just like, oh, well, good enough, say what I can. That's sabotaging your career when you do that. Always aim to raise that bar for yourself, think outside the box, and you're gonna get there. You're gonna get that x-ray vision and be able to think in a new way to always get the best possible image, no matter what that situation is. Oh wait, no, sorry. She, I had to do an angle on it because she wasn't able to get them perpendicular. So I did an angle going up and going in so it could be perpendicular. But that's what was a weird one too, yeah. I had to do a foot, I had to do a foot x-ray one time upside down because the patient's foot was twisted in an upside down angle. <laughs> so I had to hold the cassette on top of the foot, angle my tube up like this, to get an AP axial foot, but I still got it. You know, other times are like, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Just think, just think a little bit more critically. You can always get an X-ray. You can always get creative with your tube. There's always other things you can do to optimize it. Um, what tech is it, Matt? Matthew. Uh, yeah, Matthew. That that's who you go and learn. <laughs> he can think outside the box. Man, he thinks outside the box. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, where did you get this from? So y'all work with him. Y'all, you're gonna see. That's a good stopping point. We're at 10 o'clock. Okay. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, we will.